full disclosure, the voice you are listening to now is artificially generated, brought to you by Satisphonic.com. See the link in the description for more details. People who are 25 and above, what's the harshest life lesson you've learnt? That life can take a loved one at any time, so cherish those you love, make time for family and friends, and tell people you love them often. This is so true. My grandfather died the morning after the doctor agreed to discharge him from the IQ. I don't have a single picture with him, never expressed how much I loved him. It seems I had so much to tell him and ask him. His death taught me to value people and express my affections more. It's difficult but a necessity. You never know when people your love would not be there anymore. My grandfather died three days after coming home from the hospital in 2020. He got home on a Friday. He got home on a Friday. We spent the whole weekend talking and going down memory lane and just spending time like always. They raised me and I was 20 and living at home at the time. Anyway, I woke up that Monday morning around 4.30 to go to my job and just had the weirdest feeling. When it was time for me to leave, I went to go wake them up and say goodbye like I usually did before going out to work. My grandfather would usually walk me to my car when he was feeling well because it was so dark, but this day he did not move. He had died overnight. Paramedics suspect just some time after we had all fell asleep he was already so far gone, yet we all had went to bed around 11. My grandma lie in the bed asleep next to him, unknowing. Death is so sudden sometimes that it's jarring. This, I feel like most people haven't even been touched by death. I watched my grandfather die at 11. Then my favorite cousin had a fatal car accident at 16. Then my first husband died of pneumonia at 25 years old. My sister was murdered by a stalker. In 1999, she was 34. Her son was shot by police 17 years later. He just turned 21. My own daughter would pass away two weeks after my nephew's funeral. Janice was 30. I my father died a year ago. He was 82. This isn't even touching all the friends and relatives I've seen pass. Most of them were young, very young. Life is so short. Please understand this and appreciate each day you have, for it's beautiful. Your health can evaporate quickly. I turned 40 this year. A woman I have known since junior high, full of life, did everything, and I mean every fucking thing right. Great health, worked out, took care of herself, did not feel well one day, went to the dock, got blood work done. The next morning her doc calls her at like 5 am. Get to the hospital now. You are scheduled for an emergency scan as soon as you walk in. That morning she was diagnosed with some form of highly aggressive, very late stage cancer. It had already metastasized to her brain. She had six months at most. She died in less than 45 days and she deteriorated fast. She attempted to chronicle it on her Facebook, but it stopped rather quickly. It is not fair. I went through something similar. I'm talking with a friend I saw at the skate park every weekend for years, and he tells me his balance feels off. Doctors visited. Brain tumor. Operation. Complication. Complications. Death. That conversation to his death was about 10 weeks. This is so important to understand. I have seen friends complaining about falling sick and then ringing up from the hospital with chronic health issues. The Epstein-Barr virus did a number on me. Got it at 27 and now five years later, I still have issues with chronic pain, chronic runny nose, weird fever like symptoms almost daily, fatigue and muscle weakness. It will most likely be lifelong issues as well, so that's fun. Viruses are no joke. You have to speak up for yourself, no one else will. And a lot of people will be mad when you do because it's not benefiting them. Do it anyway. If your employer is doing something illegal or unethical and you decide to confront them about it, for fuck's sake, do it in a way that all communication will leave a paper trail. To piggyback this, keep emails any other proof of fucking everything so you can always cover your ass. I remember needing to do this. I mailed a thing to District X when it should have gone to District E. Why? Because the guy in charge of their entire region said to. They were his people, so I assumed he knew what he was talking about. A secretary was very bothered. I did this and went to everyone's boss to stir shit up. I had the email backing me up. Unless you're saying I can't take the guy you put in charge at his word, they had to get off my arm. Whenever we talk about something important in a phone or Teams call, I send a recap email that explicitly mentions these are things we talked about. Just to have that in writing. If someone treats you nice but treats some others badly, such as fraud, deception, bullying, then they may turn on you too. 
Your friends from high school or college will disappear if you don't make the effort to stay in touch with people in general. I'm 38 in different parts in my life. I had friends and family alive that are no longer alive. You feel almost lonely when people that have made up certain memories are no longer there for you all to retell. You also just have life slowly separate people from you. Then you go through changes where some people just took different paths and you don't even recognize who they are anymore. You also cherish those moments that you get that make you feel young and alive again or having people come back into your life and you didn't realize how much you missed them. There are three types of friends. Friends for a reason, a season and a lifetime. It's entirely normal to lose touch with certain people and that doesn't make them any less special to you and your life and vice versa. Sometimes people are in the end just meant to be part of cherished memories. Editing to include the poem this saying originated from because a few people have interpreted this saying in a rather pessimistic light. I actually did not know about this poem when I made the original comment, but after reading it, I'm hoping it will help those people see it differently. Reason, Season and a Lifetime by Brian A. Drew Talker people always come into your life for a reason, a season and a lifetime. When you figure out which it is, you know exactly what to do. When someone is in your life for a reason, it is usually to meet a need you have expressed outwardly or inwardly. They have come to assist you through a difficulty or to provide you with guidance and support to aid you physically, emotionally or even spiritually. They may seem like a godsend to you and they are. They are there for a reason you need them to be. Then, without any wrongdoing on your part or at an inconvenient time, this person will say or do something to bring the relationship to an end. Sometimes they die, sometimes they just walk away. Sometimes they act up or out and force you to take a stand. What we must realize is that our need has been met, our desire fulfilled, their work is done. The prayer you sent up has been answered and it is now time to move on. When people come into your life for a season, it is because your turn has come to share, grow or learn. They may bring you an experience of peace or make you laugh. They may teach you something you have never done. They usually give you an unbelievable amount of joy. Believe it, it is real, but only for a season. And like spring turns to summer and summer to fall, the season eventually ends. Lifetime relationships teach you a lifetime of lessons. Those things you must build upon in order to have a solid emotional foundation. Your job is to accept the lesson, love the person people, anyway, and put what you have learned to use in all other relationships and areas in your other relationships and areas in your life. It is said that love is blind, but friendship is clairvoyant. Thank you for being part of my life. So I have five friends I've been friends with since high school. All of us have floated in and out over the last 45 years, but for the last 10 have really worked on staying in touch. This weekend we have an event with all of us, looking forward to it. I also have a group of three friends that I have been friends with for about 25, 30 years, and we have dinner at least twice a month. Friendships take work on both sides. Also, many will be happy if you try to reconnect many years later, and with some of them it will be like you hung out yesterday. Also, also, most group of friends have one, maybe two people that are really good at staying in touch and maybe keeping the group together. Be that person for your friends and stop measuring effort. People are different. You can't make someone love you by giving them more of what they already don't appreciate. Still chewing on this one. Saw somewhere recently that when you see someone's potential, it's really just seeing what you would do if you were them. Welp, isn't that just a bitter bullet to bite on? Thanks for that. Best advice I could ever give anybody is never fall in love with somebody's potential. You can't make someone love you, period. Sometimes the problem is you. Some people never learn this lesson. There are some truly fucked up people that live and breathe to fuck over other people. Do not lie to your significant other. Have hard conversations and trust them enough to be able to have them with you. Give them the chance and don't be afraid to avoid doing it in fear of rejection or judgment. I learned that one the hard way, unfortunately, can give this advice to all the writer people writing about their son. You can do everything right and still fail. Thanks, Captain Picard. It is possible to commit no mistakes and still lose. That is not a weakness. No one is going to save you. You have to save yourself. 
and there's only so much effort you can put into other people before you have to start being a bit selfish and protect yourself. Just this year, I took care of my dad for years and he stole money from me. I helped my ex through a tough spot in her life at expense to my own mental health. She always told me how supportive she told her therapist and friends I was, then broke up with me for not being emotionally supportive enough. I felt like I was being a jerk, but I felt underpaid and leveraged a counteroffer to my employer and it actually worked, and it actually worked and I got a large raise. This has not been a good year for me on my outlook on loyalty. Edit. Thanks for everyone's kindness and insight. Besides one iffy comment, everyone has been quite kind. It's good to know a lot of people have gone through similar things and still came out with optimism, or at least having learned a lesson. My reply was that loyalty seems to be a one-way street. You said it better and I can relate. Oh my word, I opened this thread to say this and this, and this was the first post at the top of the page. I was a very depressed young person, and I was waiting for someone to save me, to say hi, to ask how I was, to show me love. It never happened the way I needed it to. With the help of antidepressants, I realized everyone is busy with their own shit, and it's up to you to pull yourself through yours. Honestly, from what I've gone through, there are plenty of people who want to help but you have to go then. Don't expect them to come to you. The world isn't your servant. But if you go up to people and ask nicely for help, many times you will get a yes. Again, you have to be willing to do the initial legwork. Yes, this. And no matter how hard was your upbringing, you can't blame forever the cards you have been given. Only you are responsible for yourself. There will be people who just don't like you, who might even detest you, and you will never find out why. They might have even been people you considered friends just yesterday. Shit can go south in a literal heartbeat. Yup, went to work today, for the second time ever at this job, came home for lunch instead of eating at work or getting fast food. Get home, find my mom, a stroke victim covered in blood. She fell and hit her head. Just like that, the rest of my day was spent at the emergency room. Thank God she's all right, seven staples later. But you literally have zero idea what you're walking into from one moment to the next. Fucking life, man. There's a guy who finally got extradited from Japan after a year and a half because he was in prison for passing out at the wheel from altitude sickness and killing a couple people. Something completely out of his control, completely unpredictable and improbable, being in a foreign prison, not knowing if he'll be able to get back home to his family. From something that happened in a split second. Just insane. I knew a Brazilian guy who died from being jetted with water in Japanese prison. He was in solitary fire three months before, no futon, on floor, just for running red light, because no one stops nighttime at red lights in San Paulo. This is why I want to give birth in a hospital, childbirth, and go from fine to fatal in minute. I was born at home. Because of that, I will be a paraplegic for the rest of my life. I was in the best spot I'd been in a long time, physically and mentally healthy, biggest break of my career at the time. Then I was in an accident that left my friend dying in my arms and destroyed my leg. This was a couple years ago, and I'll never be the person I was before that moment. Right out of college, well-paid software development job next year, diagnosed with Mrs. next year, face planted on a sidewalk with my first seizure as I developed epilepsy next year, met the woman of my dreams next year, started having three seizures a week next year, started having three seizures a week next year, lost job. The company paid for a brain surgery to treat and merely cure me of my epilepsy next year. Get new job, but COVID hits and leads to immediate layoffs next year. In and out of jobs and falling deeper into debt next year. In and out of jobs and falling deeper into debt next year. Finally married and wife drops old, going nowhere job for a well-paid job to help. Support us modern day. On the brink of defaulting on every loan and credit card in my wallet, when I land the job of my dreams with a fantastic salary, doing what I love as a software developer and helping people get the healthcare they need told her. Life's a fucking roller coaster. Just keep moving forward because something even better could be right around the corner. Sometimes if you risk it to get the biscuit, you don't get the biscuit and actually you destroy your life. This is for the people pleasers like myself. You can bend over backwards for everyone, be a doormat, make it your life goal to avoid confrontation, and you're still going to end up being the super villain in someone's story by the time you hit 30. You're writing your own story. Set your boundaries and realize no girl guy, vice, or amount of money is worth compromising them. 
checking all the boxes required to be successful does not mean you will actually be successful. Well said. Nearly everyone I personally know who is successful works their ass off. But there are also countless people who work their ass off and aren't close to successful. You're going to have regrets. Things you didn't do as well as you could have. Things you didn't earn. Things you didn't earn. Things you didn't mean to do. Things you didn't do that you wanted to do. Don't waste the present dwelling on the past. Use the regrets as lessons to change your decisions. By the time you hit 30, all the small things you've gotten away with that everyone bugged you about starts catching up to you. Bad posture, welcome back and neck pain smoking, welcome a strong cough never stretch, welcome tightness bad diet, welcome various health issue. You always feel invincible when you're young. 30s, where you realize you were wrong. I'm 33 and fuck you for reminding me of all the things I should have done. Get with it now, dude. Still plenty of time to fix things at 33. Don't be 40, 50, 60, 70 in regret, wasting away the last decade because you thought it was too late. I was in a store the other day, and an older guy, 70s proper, mentioned to the clerk that he had a birthday earlier that week. The clerk asked him how he was doing, and the guy responded if I had known I was going to lice live this long, I would have taken better care of myself. That hurt to hear as a relatively healthy, yet mostly sedentary, 38-year-old. I should have tried harder in college and worked with the goal in mind. Many people in leadership positions are anything but leaders. You can have a loving family, great friends, and financial security, but still feel isolated and empty. Don't drive when you are sleepy. I feel asleep driving after working night shift. I was in a coma for two weeks and partially paralyzed. After four months in the hospital, I was medically retired from the US Army. Before the accident, I was in great shape and I was running about 10 miles per day training for a race. I have not been able to run since the accident. Lesson, don't drive when you are sleepy. You could die or hurt someone else. Hoping and wishing doesn't make things change. Making different decisions and working hard does. Take care of your fucking teeth. Nobody told me that fillings eventually have to be replaced and you'll be paying for that cavity again in 10 years and then again after another 10 years and so on. Edit. This is not the harshest life lesson I've ever learned, but it is potentially the most expensive. It looks like other people are blessed with motivation and self-discipline and make stuff happen. If you sit and around long enough, the angel of self-discipline will float to you and bless you with the desire to do healthy, productive stuff that will benefit you in the short, mid, long term. False. You have to get off your couch and do what you don't feel like doing right now. That's the lesson I had to learn. That last sentence was it for me. I was brought up pretty sheltered and spoiled, and I commonly used I just don't feel like it as an excuse, and got away with it. Once I was an adult, I had to realize that if you don't do things, whether you feel like it or not, barring actual sickness or disability, you'll be miserable. You certainly can't keep a job only going when you feel like it. Your house and your health will be in shambles if you only take care of them when you feel like it. You just have to do things that need to be done. I'm 35, and the harshest lesson I learned is that life sucks sometimes. You think you have everything figured out, but then something bad happens and throws your whole plan off track. It's important to be flexible and not to take things for granted cause shit can hit the fan real quick. Yo! Living life costs so much money. You generally have to first make a mistake in order to avoid making it in the future. I'd have to say that you can't keep everyone happy. At some point, you have to let down, upsettinger someone. Just because your friends are your friends doesn't mean that your work ethic values line up. Friends can still screw you over without doing so intentionally. Heavily abridged, T, doctor, lived with three best buddies from high school for several years, who were all older than me. They screwed me on rent and utilities for years, because they didn't want to be responsible. I am out thousands having kept us warm and not homeless. Growing up in the 90s and listening to a lot of rape, I was under the impression that being a thug and getting into trouble a lot was cool. So my suburban ass, along with all my friends, emulated that lifestyle. When I was 21 of us got murdered, suddenly it wasn't so cool anymore. People don't really attract like-minded people. If you're a normal person, you think along the lines of the golden rule. But I'll tell you this. 
There's going to be someone you consider to be a friend who's going to not only disappoint you, they're going to hurt you, and they're not even going to value your friendship enough that they care to rectify that. Hell, they might even enjoy it. My grandfather told me when I was younger, some people are just born evil, and sometimes it's impossible to see them coming. He was right. He